Hi, I'm Chris Witzgall with Balmar, and today I'm here with Rod Collins from Compass Marine. Uh, he was kind enough to invite me up to his office and testing facility in beautiful Maine. We set up a, a group of testers, and by the way, you were, you were easily one of the best uh, testers for us, uh, both in, in feedback and responsiveness, and it really just enthusiasm for helping us uh, make this a great product. So tell me a little bit about why you were so <laughs> jacked up about, about uh, battery monitor. Well, it's pretty simple, Chris. You know, we have been uh, involved with Amp Hour, or what we call Kahoot Counters, battery monitors, for well over 20 years since they first came out. And yeah. while they give a lot of great information, what we quickly discovered many years ago is that uh, they don't stay accurate with the battery for very long in terms of state of charge. Um, they give great information on voltage, they give great information on instantaneous current, uh, but it, when it comes to counting amp hours in and out of the battery, they tend to get out of sync with the battery because a battery is an ever moving target capacity wise. Mm -hmm. So um, what that forced us to do was try to figure out how we could better program those. And what that led to many years ago, it led to us actually having a custom built uh, constant current device that we could discharge batteries with so we knew their actual true amp hour capacity. This is, this is just so you could figure out, okay, a battery is uh, two years old, what's the capacity now compared to what the manufacturer said it was when new? No. Absolutely. Okay. And because an amp hour counter is a calculator. Yep. And if, if you put in the wrong information, it's it's going to give bad information. So by knowing what the actual uh, amp hour capacity of the battery is, we can more accurately program it. But that doesn't really solve, even if we have the actual amp hour capacity, it doesn't solve the issues with predicting s accurate SOC on a boat because a lot of boaters do what we call PSOC cycle their batteries. And that just means partial state of charge, meaning we discharge down to 50%. Okay. And then we charge back up and we may stop at 80 or 85 percent because... Why, why would you do that? Well, because of the declining charge acceptance rate with lead acid batteries. So as okay. we get up to 80 or 85 percent state of charge, running our engine, if we're doing it with an alternator, to charge the batteries makes a little sense because as, as the batteries come up to target voltage, which, which we've got up here shown on the, the black device, it's at 14.8, mm -hmm. uh, the current just starts going down. Yep. And uh, so what happens is you wind up running the engine or a gen set uh, for an inordinate amount of time if you're trying to get to 100% state of charge. So a lot of cruisers would cycle between 50% and 80 or 85% state of charge, shut down the charge source, discharge again. Well, what would happen there is now, because we haven't fully recharged the battery, the Kaloon counter has not had a chance to accurately sync with a fully charged battery. Okay. And so it further gets itself out of whack. Then we can throw things like Pukert and, and, and charge efficiency, the, the columbic efficiency of the mm -hmm. battery on there, because in bulk charging, a lead acid battery is anywhere between 97 and 98% efficient, meaning if we put one amp hour in, we can take 98% of that back out. Sure. Um, but when we get up to absorption voltage, that charge efficiency is rapidly declining. And we, when we get up into the higher 90s, the charge efficiency, you may put one amp hour in and you're only storing half an amp hour. Yeah. But it's, so it's we, not a constant. It's not a constant, it's variable. But the amp hour counters use a fixed columbic efficiency. So if we have that set at 10% or 20%, on the way out, it counts the amp hours accurately. So if we discharge one amp hour, it shows one amp hour. But on the way back up, if we put one amp hour back in, it's not gonna show one amp hour, it's gonna show 10% less or 20% or less wherever we have that set. It's like, it's like a clock that's, uh, you know, the batteries are dead on a clock and it's correct twice a day. There's gonna be certain parts in that charge curve where it's perfectly right. Absolutely. And then re increasingly wrong in other parts of the charge. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is these, you know, what we call getting out of sync with the battery tend to add up. Yep. And the longer you PSOC cycle, the more inaccurate your state of charge calculation is. So, you know, it, at the time and even today, they give great information. But where they tend to fall flat for most boat owners and most of our customers, quite frankly, 
is in remaining accurate for SOC. And a lot of boat owners just don't want to tackle that because they don't know the capacity of their battery bank. We have thousands of dollars worth of equipment here to test for that. The average boat owner does not. So, you know, it becomes a, a complicated thing and that's why we jumped at the chance to, you know, first of all, I think I sent you a three-page document yeah, yeah, was, of what we wanted. There's was was an awful a, lot of a, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yep. um, that was before we even started alpha testing. And so, yeah, we jumped at the opportunity because this has been a chronic problem for a very long time. And, uh, you know, most boat owners don't want the hassles of reprogramming, having to get back to 100% to recalibrate it. Yep. Uh, and that's where, you know, uh, an, a battery monitor such as the self-learning SG200 really changes the game. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what you got here. This is really kind of interesting stuff. So, you know, it may look complicated, but it's really not. Basically what we have here, Chris, is because we test a lot of batteries for, you know, amp hour capacity so we know wh where the state of health was and, and with this, this stuff may not be necessary anymore. Um, but you know, we have station one over there, which is charge discharge. We, on top is a variable rate power supply mm -hmm. uh, where we can set the current that we're charging at. We can set the voltage. Um, and so that recharges. And then the, the device on the bottom is a lab grade uh, constant current discharger where we can set the discharge rate. So for example, this was 130 amp hour rated battery. If we divide that by 20, we get a 6.5 amp discharge rate. Okay. So, uh, and then, you know, we can see the, the, the discharge graph over here, but we've got four stations. Uh, one of them is fully computerized. Um, two of them are, are, are manual, but can be connected to the computer. And then we've got a charging station and another charging station. And, uh, you know, that's, it, it basically, this just makes it easy for us right. to connect batteries quickly and do these tests. So, so, so it's fair to say you, you, you've gotten really good at, um, figuring out the actual age capacity of batteries in a laboratory setting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But what we what we always try to do, Chris, is we always try, when we're, so when we were testing the SG200, um, we did not just test for capacity. What I wanted to see was how it would track for PSOC cycling. Yeah. So not only did we, you know, discharge, so this, this 130 amp hour rated battery, about two years old, delivering 101 amp hours, okay? So we, we did not just test for um, that in, in, in relation to discharging from 100%. We would even go PSOC cycle it for 10 or 20 cycles and then discharge it again and see where it was and then compare that to the SOC uh, calculation. Sure. The SOH was much simpler because it's the state of health and that's, to, to me, that's the real game changer with the self-learning SG200 because no other battery monitor out there has been able to tell you with the glance of a screen where your battery sits in relation to the amp hour capacity that you programmed into it. And that's called the state of health screen. And so now an owner, and by industry definition, a battery that can no longer deliver 80% of its rated capacity is dead. Doesn't mean it's gonna not work on your boat, but beyond that, it means it starts to get dangerous. We could fracture a plate and have an internal short. Battery could just completely give out on you. Um, we start shedding chunks of the plate. You know, th these are all things that, that, that uh, you know, this is now gonna be able to say, hey, look, you need to start thinking about your batteries. You're heading to, heading to Labrador this summer. Your battery's at 75% state of charge. I don't know that you wanna do that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that. So, so uh, you, you, again, you were one of the very first people outside of the company that got a hold of the product. Um, tell me, tell me a little bit about that experience. Well, it was interesting because one day I got this box from you, and inside, and this was before we had a retail packaging. Sure. And inside was a bubble wrap display, a bubble wrap cable not connected to the plug, mm -hmm. uh, and the shunt. Yeah. And then uh, an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that said, "Connect meter, connect cable, connect shunt. Have fun." <laughs> so. Uh, and, and I know why you did that, and that was because you really wanted to see how user intuitive this was. And uh, I think I only had a couple questions, and we plugged it in and we started playing around with it. Um, and so, what, what battery did you hook it up to first? Well, first I, I we connected it up to a, what I call a dual purpose battery, yeah. which is you know it was a Group Thirty One labeled as a deep cycle, but you know really it's not a thick plate deep cycle. So uh, we selected that. 
uh, programmed in the rated amp hour capacity and ran about five cycles on it. It wasn't doing what, what I expected, so I picked up the phone, maybe I sent you an email, I can't remember, and, and basically said, oh, sorry, we forgot to tell you that algorithm hasn't been perfected yet. So uh, the next time we get to send it back, that algorithm was ready, and yep, we went. Yep. Um, so, th so then you went to lithium, I think, right? Uh, from that point, I said, "Hey, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna throw this cal pack on the bench," and right. that cal pack was used in the practical sailor testing. And then we did a one year 100% state of charge, just charge for 100%, let it sit, yep. and the battery lost 11% of its capacity. Um, so I knew we knew exactly what the capacity of that battery was, and within a couple of days, okay. I was sending you another email saying, "Wow, Chris." Um, <laughs> state of health is within 1% and state of charge is within 1%. So for me, selfishly, that is amazing because I have a lithium iron phosphate bank on my own boat and uh, it's a very up and coming technology. So to be able to track it that way, and since 2011 I've been using a Link Pro and it will not stay accurate with that battery. Yeah. I was having to go to 100% every 10 to 20 cycles and that's just unacceptable on a battery yeah. bank that I can PSOC cycle forever. And, and where we were going routinely to 80 or 90% depth of discharge, you kind of want your amp hour counter to be accurate. Sure. Because as you know, lithium tends to just fall off the cliff when it gets to 0%. So yeah. to me, that's why, you know, that's why I have one of these on my own bow right now. That's yeah. why uh, it, 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 it just works. So, so you went to uh, AGM next? We testing? went to AGM next. Yep. We tested both TPPL and a, and a Lifeline AGM, a traditional AGM. So a thin plate um, battery. Thin plate, pure lead. Pure um, lead, yep. And that one happened to be an Odyssey. Okay. Um, but North Star is very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we tested the Lifeline. And on both of those products, we were seeing accuracies of within 3 to 5% for SOC and about 3 to 5% on SOH as well. Yep. Um, we PSOC cycle both of them. We you know, ran them through similar paces that we, we, we did with any of the other batteries. We didn't just go 100%, 0%. That's not representative of what's actually happening on a boat. So, uh, and then from that point, uh, we went to the flooded lead acid. And um, uh, similar, uh, the, the only thing that I would say there is it took a little bit longer to learn state of health, uh, but it did. And, and then SOC again was within three to 5%. Uh, okay. I don't think we ever saw it worse than 3%. So <clears throat> pretty remarkable uh, from that standpoint, I mean, uh, th this is this is a device that in in you know less than ten cycles we had extreme accuracy. I think at one point I sent you an email on on one of the flood of lead acid batteries that we're testing, and I think it was testing at seventy nine point eight percent state of health in the in the SG two hundred was reading eighty one percent, and that was in about six cycles. Yeah, we'll live with that. I, I can certainly live with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that is game changing, yeah. and it, it's easy for customers. And I think that to us is the magic. Other than the fact that we can add multiple shunts, the smarts are actually in the shunt. Yep. So really the display is just that. It's a display and it can show you the data from all the different shunts around the boat. So if you have multiple battery banks, a bow thruster, a starter battery, whatever yep. it is, uh, we can connect multiple different shunts and share the display. And then uh, in the future as new technologies come along or we need to add an algorithm, uh, what really matters to us is that this will be updatable through Bluetooth. So, and again, another excellent um, design. So we're, we're real happy with it. And, and for us, it, again, it's, it's a complete game changer for our customers because it, it's something they don't have to think about. It's one less thing on the boat they have to think about. All they have to do is look at the SOC or the state of health or you know, what amperage they're drawing or what devices are drawing water, how their charging performance is because we can now see the amperage on the screen. Uh, so, you know, it, it really, is an excellent uh, choice for most boaters. Okay. Well, Rod, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate no you problem. having me out to your place. Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed, and uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Chris.